Anemia. Let's discuss it as an umbrella term. If we can understand anemia, then we can know how to treat the different types of anemia. I want to take you on a segment on how to understand lab values and interpret findings of anemia in a very easy way that helped me tremendously in my career. My name is Christina, nurse practitioner. Let's get started. So anemia is a deficiency in red blood cells. Within the red blood cells, it contains the hemoglobin that helps transport oxygen to vital organs. The lifespan of a red blood cell is about 120 days. Red blood cells are produced from the bone marrow along with white blood cells and platelets. So remember this nursing pearl. Anemia is never a normal finding. Always suspect something is going on. Now, with anemia, you can differentiate it into two categories to help you process how anemia differs. I use the terms underproduction versus destruction. So, underproduction is when the bone marrow is not making enough red blood cells. This can be a series of reasons, such as nutritional deficiency, um, such as vitamin B12 or iron deficiency, having cancer and receiving chemo can cause a chemo suppression, which results in anemia, or anemias of chronic disease, such as chronic renal failure, which can cause low levels of erythropoietin, and also aplastic anemia. So as a RN, we look at our patient's labs and review the hemoglobin and hematocrit trends. But we need to be cognizant of a few other labs that are very important. One of those is your reticulocyte count. So this is your first step. So your reticulocyte count tells you the ability of the bone marrow to produce red blood cells. The number is really dependent on the hemoglobin level of the patient, so it varies from patient to patient. However, let's say on average your normal number can range anywhere from 1 to 2 percent. So if the reticulocyte count is on the lower side, it means your bone marrow is not producing enough red blood cells. So there is a underproduction. So on the other spectrum of destruction, your reticulocyte count would be higher than normal. It tells you your bone marrow is producing too much red blood cells and they're getting destroyed. So going back to underproduction versus destruction, I want to now focus on underproduction. So we understand the bone marrow is not producing enough red blood cells. So with that said, with any anemia, we classify it by size and color, remember that, um, of the red blood cells. So the size of the red blood cell is your MCV, which is your mean corpuscular volume. And the color of your red blood cell is your MCH, which is your mean corpuscular hemoglobin. This tells you the amount of hemoglobin contained within the red blood cell. So let's talk about your MCV, which again is size. So for size of RBCs, you have the following. With acidic, it means cell. So microcytic, small cell, is defined as your lab value that is less than 80. Normocytic, which is your normal size cell, would be between 80 to 96. And macrocytic is your large cell, which is greater than 96. So let's talk about MCH, which is color. As chromic, it means color, which is the amount of hemoglobin. So let's learn the terms. Hypochromic is low color, normochromic is normal color, and hyperchromic is a lot of color. So if you ever had a microcytic hypochromic anemia, it would include iron deficiency anemia and thalassemia anemia. A normocytic normochromic anemia is related to anemia of chronic disease. And to include another important lab value would be your RDW, which is your red blood cell distribution width. This is your standard size. Think about like going to a donut shop and you have a standard glazed donut size. Every once in a while you may have something that is not usually a typical size, so it would be greater than 15%. Now as a RN, how do you know when someone has anemia? One definitive way to diagnose is through a lab specimen report. However, let's 
let's say in the morning the labs were within normal range then mid-afternoon came and the patient is feeling fatigue your patient's heart rate is um, tachycardic and some other symptoms of anemia could also include fatigue weakness shortness of breath chest pain tachycardia like we just mentioned cool extremities, maybe having some light jaundice because of the destruction of red blood cells. So now what? So number one, I want you to think about who is your patient? Are they older? Usually elderly have a normally low h and which runs on the lower side and is medically termed idiopathic anemia of aging. You don't want to assume that every patient that is elder always has a lower h and And number two, you also want to consider your patient that may live in a high altitude area if they smoke or have COPD because they may have polychythemia. So get some labs. There could be a change. Maybe clinically you're not seeing active blood loss, but your nursing senses should be heightened and request some labs to get drawn. Another NCLEX tip, you want to always make sure you do a peripheral smear. This is used when a patient has a mixed anemia to help diagnose. So some nursing interventions you would want to consider, um, blood product transfusion for the patient that may be in acute or chronic state. You want to make sure you control the bleed. And last, you want to offer foods that they may be deficient in, such as um, vitamin B12, iron or folate. Again, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for upcoming notifications. Take care.